Wow. <laughs> wow. My mother and I were just discussing about the questions that cropped up during our conversation. Yes. During the Valentine period, we were guest speakers in various organizations. And one particular question that people talked about was sex. Yes. Sex is um, sex is so loud, but people don't really discuss okay. sex, you know. And as couples, we tend to overlook that this is a crucial part of our marriage. In short, without consummation, there's no marriage. Radio. It's so critical that that is a key thing. You must consummate your marriage before you are marked married. So after the vows, the night together, the sex together is is the completion of the vow you began whether in church, traditional, whatever process you went through. So welcome to today's conversation. It's still Relationship Clinic and it's your girl Angie and my husband. I'm rich. Oh yeah. You're welcome. It's a <laughs> pleasure to be in your midst again. Oh yes. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for the comments. Keep it coming. Tell us where you're watching from. Let's get to know ourselves. Uh, so today's conversation is all about frequently asked questions about sex. sex yeah. Before we continue, subscribe. It's a privilege. Subscribe, share with friends, encourage them to subscribe. I hope you're enjoying this. Subscribe, 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 like, subscribe. I want your feedback too, your questions too. What would you like to hear? Exactly. I also want to remind that our social, we're on social media, various platforms, Facebook and Instagram is Keeping Marriage Alive. Um, of course, this YouTube is Keeping Marriage Alive Initiative. Our Twitter is. To, um, KM, a life KMA, and of course, you can chat us via WhatsApp plus 234 I repeat, you can chat us via WhatsApp through this number plus 234 Hope to hear from you. Our joy in relationship clinic is to give you, um, you know, just like you go to the hospital and you get um, your needs. Prescriptions yes, that exactly. will solve the situations you're going through. Exactly. That's what we do in research clinic. We understand what you're saying, we get it, and we give you prescriptions, solutions through habits that can take you from zero to hero. I hope you like that. So let's continue. Frequently asked questions. One of the frequently asked questions is this. What is sex? If we I mean, just mention that question, what is sex? Some people think that um, sex has been so bastardized that we think sex means you know just being sex, sexy and, and yeah, having sex. They are two different things. Yeah. So some of us even abuse the mutual sex, sex happening because we don't understand it. My friend, can you remember one uh, one event we went to? And the guy said, "If my wife doesn't have want to have sex with me, is it okay to force her?" Yeah. Can you remember? Yeah. And what did we say? No, it's not okay to force. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you force your spouse, what are you doing in very thing? You're virtually raping her. So we can be raped abusing in our Abusing her. <laughs> abusing him. Yes, anyone. him. I like that. So it can happen to both of us. So sex is a, is a coming together of man and woman in order to pleasure each other the way God had created. Because there are now various forms of pleasure yes. that we have to state that. So there is the pleasure part, orgasm should take place, both of you should have each other in mind. But for us as Christians, is the consummation is the consummation of marriage. Meaning that when when we have sex together, we're saying we choose each other. Yeah. Body, spirit, soul. Mm. You mean, what do you have to say yeah. about that? Mm. It, it, it must be a willing participation. Mm. Anticipating pleasure. Mm -hmm. There should be no coercing, no forcefulness. <laughs> You know, and no injury to any party. <laughs> and subjecting the person to something the person is not willingly mm -hmm. does not willingly want to participate in. Yes. Sir. So it must be done properly. So how do I pleasure my spouse? That's yeah. the question we it's all must answer. Crucial. How do I pleasure my spouse? You know, because so you get married, and this is very crucial for virgins that get married and do not even know have a clue. Number one about pleasuring your spouse is First of all, remember that we are together in this. Yes. So whether you're a novice, sure, there is one pastor that said something, and I agree with him. He said something so crucial. He said, if you are very experienced, I am married to someone different. That experience cannot carry you in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So we all enter into our relationship, whether virgins or over experienced people, new with a new mindset. Mm -hmm. Because the person we are getting saying yes to is different from has a different experience. Yes, yes. exactly. But you can learn a hand and teach. 
and both of you discuss and harmonize. Exactly. You know, if you're more experienced, learning experience counting that you teach and you are patient with one that is so called a virgin. <laughs> uh, virgin or inexperienced. Yes, yeah. You know. So how do you pleasure your spouse? Which is second question. Number one is to have a conversation. You cannot pleasure someone to identify what their needs are. Let's have a conversation. As a married couple, when last you sit down and say, ah, this sex thing, you know, I'm pleased, I'm not pleased, my body is changing. Even when the body puts on, when pregnancy comes, are you discussing? Sex, if it's not on the table, is already diminishing. So are you discussing sex? Is sex on your table in your marriage? Yes. Share it, put boundaries. Pleasure should be with boundaries, yes, yes. you know? Mm. And the depth of sex is actually preferring to pleasure your spouse. Mm. Not thinking about your own pleasure as it were. If you make an attempt to pleasure your spouse, you, you invariably will be pleasured. Uh, rather, you got the very be best in, in, in sex. But uh, just as your husband said, it's like saying, I will invest in pleasuring my husband yes. and he will invest in pleasuring mm. me. And in that investment, what happens? We're able to come together and give ourselves pleasure. pleasure. No. I call it a touch of heaven. Mm -hmm. Because if only one person is pleasured in each encounter, the, the person that is not pleasured when they are meeting next time say this is a waste of time. Yes. It's a waste of so time. So we have a lot of you people, know? especially the women. Shouldn't be one sided exactly. at all. You, you, there should be a touching, there should be emotional connection. And when infidelity has played a part, where hurt has played a part, sex is not really, the fullness of sex is not enjoyed because emotions are detached, it becomes mechanical. The aim of sex is not to be mechanical, it's meant to be enjoyed. And that's why Songs of Solomon is in the Bible. It's Lega. Yes. And uh, the, the more spontaneous it is, the more creative both people are. Mm -hmm. It also plays a part to the fun and the pleasure. Exactly. You know. So, um, Christians, yes. So discuss sex. Don't be overborn again. You did for married. <laughs> participate in it actively, actively because there's no sex in heaven. So, so the third you question know? they say is: Does sexual attraction decrease as one grows older? I think Mimi, I think you should answer that. I think that question was asked. Yes, it does for us from different angles. There's a hormonal part we are because of the hormones. For the for does sexual attraction, sexual. not sexual performance. Okay. The attraction. You know, there are two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you say sexual performance, the 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 consistent uh, this thing decreases. You don't make love as often. Mm -hmm. Sexual attraction is okay, let's do ourselves as a case study. When you and I got married, our sexual attraction was not even as high. It's getting better now yes. because you are used to having that. So people, you know, so that's what I'm talking about: sexual attraction. So maybe okay, if you are grown to become friends mm -hmm. and, be, and harmonizing things, mm -hmm. it should actually go. It will go higher. Mm -hmm. You you feel for each other more. You desire each other much more, and you eventually get on to participate in it more. So sexual attraction actually increases if you are friends mm -hmm. and you've grown together to to harmonize each other. And, and, and your best of friends is, is small. Okay, so um, sexual attraction. Mimi, I want to ask you. Look, it's not as if as a case study. I'm looking at people that have. I think sexual attraction increases for those who keep one person, or one person as a partner. But when you have so different kinds of partners, from our research and counseling, it seems that what happens there is a gap. So there is a decrease. Because you're looking for more. I mean, what's your take? Using us as a case study, how has our sexual attraction been so far? Being very truthful, how? You didn't know this question was coming. You know, the increase. Mm. I've seen myself further drawn to her sexually and desiring her more. You know, there's, uh, there's the desire goes with purity and cleanliness. Mm. You are sure of this person, you trust the person. You, you love the person more, you're more in love with the person. So all that comes into build up. Unlike going outside to cheat and all that, there's a whole lot of things you can't even trust, you can't even think, uh, secrecy and all that. Exactly. But yes, so but with purity, you are confident and you enjoy yourself, you take extra effort to pleasure each other, having a clear understanding of what sex should be, the fullness of sex should be. Mm. It creates more pleasure, more desire, and eventually, uh, wow, on the bed. So, so um, for me, when we got married, we struggled with having a um, frequency of our sex was a bit not as expected. 
But as we began to have become comfortable and have sexual attraction, our tempo increased and is steady. Mm -hmm. It's been 18 years right now and it's still steady. So that shows that God can really work on us. But I think if we didn't work on creating a habit of wanting each other, because we have to be intentional, we have to create timetables, we have to tell each other when we were we wanted each other and we're able to, to share, agree that these two, three times a week was it, until the habit became a pattern and drew us closer. What people do is that when they feel that the sex will decrease because children have come, a lot of things are calling, bills are calling, now, for them to invest in each other, what they literally do is look for soccer outside. Yeah. And looking for soccer outside, you come back and compare. And what happens is there is a drop. Yeah. Nothing lives in a vacuum, actually. Exactly. So you better invest with the one you have that is forever than go outside. You don't go outside. That, that's a breach. So, invariably, we are saying that question that decrease happens at the beginning of your relationship after a while. Yes. But your ability to invest in it gives it another spark that can be maintained for years mm -hmm. so after 15 16 years you should still be enjoying sex i am hope you are we hope to enjoy much more much more ahead. what are you enjoying yes i am <laughs> okay so let's continue can one be satisfied by one partner i, mean, I think this question is for you yes that was a, a critical question i asked when mm. going into marriage so there's only one person <laughs> not that i was a uh, what should I call it? Studs before or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, the idea of one person, even still a bit boring, which is monotonous. But I found out in our own marriage, it's not been that way. In fact, it's getting better and better. But it took some effort. It took creativity. Yes. It took spontaneity. It, it took being willing to participate. You know, sex happens between two people, mm. two willing people. Someone can ask for sex and then says, I'm tired, give an excuse. And that would dampen the morale. And as that keeps happening, it dampens further and further. So, because she was ever willing, and I was ever willing too, <laughs> Where are most, you? Times, most times, so it, it helped it actually. So, it helped it. So, it, it's very important. And it's very important. Just yeah. to add, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. and anytime we said no to our spouse, we gave a promise to, to meet up later. So, not when you say no, there is no assurance of hope for tomorrow. Yes, yes. Okay, sorry, sweetheart, I'm tired. Can we have this tomorrow or tomorrow night? Yes. So it keeps the person that they're not just like so something yes, the person look forward to, to exactly. and understands you know? better that okay, it's not a no no. Because yeah. sometimes we look at it in a weird way. If you say no, it means they're saying no to me. Mm. Not just for the sexual mm. encounter, but no to me as a personality. That's true, that's true. Everybody that's wants true. to be valued, wants to be loved, wants to be appreciated, exactly. wants to be desired, exactly. you know. So that's <laughs> that can dampen someone. Really. Exactly. So, um, so when you asked us what our views about sex toys and pornography, Mimi, <laughs> uh, we say it's a no no for the pornography because inadvertently the mind plays tricks. Mm -hmm. When you're watching pornography, you're going to compare the person you're seeing there that's acting a film with your real spouse. And remember <laughs> that if we said at the beginning that sex is a union of two, yes. it's a consummation of your marriage. And if you're a Christian, the Lord said, that um, it's a union of fidelity of two people, husband and wife. When that picture comes in, remember that Jesus said, if you've thought about it, you've committed adultery. Yes. So when that picture comes, it becomes a third party in your relationship. Mm. Many people use pornography to excite themselves, but they remove the e essence of sex. So today, what we did was, we said right from the beginning of our mind that there will be no pornography. Mm. And I think that was one of the best things we did. So we created with our minds, pure with each other as the picture. Touching each other, allowing the Holy Spirit. I had to learn after 17, nearly 18 years now. I have learned, I have known that the only way you can keep creativity top notch is to pray about it. Oh, yes. God, we're about to meet. I ask for your wisdom, your grace. And this God who gives willingly has given us creativity. Of wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. Because for that particular situation, that time, the wisdom required is not the same you just do the same thing that excited your spouse yesterday, yesterday no. so it's always new it's always fresh mm -hmm. even if you know so because the mind is pure and attuned to one another as my husband said to pleasure one another mm -hmm. not demanding what's in the picture not thinking of how the other person feels because you're really inviting that person into your bedroom for yeah. sex toys, I think we need to divide sex toys into two because the question was what yeah, do we think about yes. yes. So I was thinking about sex toys and I have to divide we have what we call sexual enhancers, then we have pure sex toys. 
sexual enhancers are like um maybe something that puts a little bit of creativity maybe you cooked rice you now put like carrots and dices on it mm -hmm. things like edible underwear that you chew off your spouse's body like putting a little perfume on your body to enhance the attraction wearing lingerie that makes you look a little bit sexy for men petals, like yes, candlelight, you know, good music exactly those are enhancers so they enhance the appeal for one another now we have sex toys that literally if not managed well can replace yes. your spouse yes. so sometimes we say we are having sex with our spouse but we're having sex really with the toys so, yeah. so the toys take the place of our spouse therefore diminishing the act of sex or what we call it the act of love making so if that thing you're calling a sex toy is diminishing and taking the place your spouse should be active in that means that means you have really, actually not bringing you closer exactly. it's actually separating you without you knowing yeah. and after a while you begin to say yes. what the heck am i doing yes. this can where do, is my sex toy yes this can do yeah. what my spouse needs to do yeah. so remember what i said this has been divided into in sex enhancers and then sex toys but we're leaving one more question um if my spouse likes sex so much how can it be curtailed <laughs> My husband and I had the libido issue. I think he has mentioned yes. it. So do we need to? It shouldn't be curtailed. That's <laughs> I don't know. It should be. But it should be managed. Uh -huh. You know, uh, the way it goes, there must be a lot of discussion about uh -huh. it. I've not seen two couples that have the same libido. Uh -huh. Incidentally, so if one has lucky. a higher one. Okay. One has a lower, lower one. <laughs> the lower one actually holds the ace in that he or she should be very understanding uh -huh. to the one that has a higher, higher libido. Operate, calm down, be willing and available, but also make express yourself to the to the spouse that's come. My liver is not up to that. I can't meet up with that. And the discuss and find a middle road. When we started, my wife had higher liver than I. We she could she could want sex, sex every day. Me, I could want maybe twice a week. So we matched. What was the middle line? We agreed to three times a week. Mm -hmm. And we had to use timetable just as I said, so that I don't, I don't forget it or something. I said, I'm too busy. And I said, me reminder. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's it. So we kept at it till we now merge. And you know, we have a way of rubbing up on each other. My own sexual needs start increasing. Mm. I want to also say, manage it. So yeah. that's how you manage it, don't curtail it. So, so because what? the person that has that strong libido is real to the person. Yes. It's very, very real. Yes. And, and when it needs to be satisfied to some extent. And when you say that, when you mock the person or complain about the person, you, you are ridiculing what yes. makes them happy. happy. You know, imagine my husband has said to me, You're yeah, wild, you're useless. I would, I would withdraw. But will I withdraw? Maybe if I'm not a Christian, withdraw into the arms of another person. Maybe I'm not a Christian, withdraw into masturbation. Yeah. So there are a lot of things. So in this relationship where sex comes in, it's a gift of love to one another. And if you're, the other person has a higher libido, let's discuss it. Let's meet, as my husband said, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then carefully, intentionally sow a seed till a pattern is created. For us, we created a pattern. We no longer need a shadow because now our brain is wired to meet so, so time. And creativity has also been added to it. And that is it. So not curtailing, but preparation, negotiation, becoming one. That's the answer. And that's a bit of a delicate situation because this is a need that no other person can meet. Yes, that's our source, yes. So we want your spouse to you want another person to meet that need for your spouse? So think about it carefully yes. and act appropriately. Mm -hmm. So um, I think with these few questions, these are the questions we've been asking. Yes, after a certain time of, um, of marriage, the hormones change, menopause comes in. But if you have friends, if the communication line is kept open, yeah. if sex has been on the table from day one in your marriage, yeah. pleasure will continue till old age. Hope you've enjoyed it. What, what final words do you have for them? Let good sex happen. Oh, let good sex happen. Don't defraud your spouse. Hey, thank no you. No excuse to defraud your spouse. Today my husband found badly. Yes. You know, let me thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Okay, so uh, my own final words to you is sex is beautiful. Don't let the word redefine sex as dirty. It's beautiful. It was given as a gift to, to the marriage union. And it is one way of saying, the highest way of saying I love you. Yes. Keep faithful. Invest in one another and really enjoy a touch of heaven on earth. We love you. Sorry for the distractions a bit, but we love you. Have a blessed time. Your feedback. Go learn, ask questions. Always put sex on the...
table. Hey, hey, hey. Don't touch that dial. We have an announcement. Our singles arm is celebrating. They have an event coming up. Love School, Love School Singles Hangout holds on the 23rd of July this month, 2 p.m. And yes, it's in Festac Lagos. Be part of this, join. And yes, there'll be a mixed love version, a hybrid version for those in and out of the country or want to just participate that are not close by. But if you're around, sign up, sign up. Sign up by dialing plus 2347088765212. Send the chat plus 2347088765212. And we'll be glad to send you a ticket. It is free, but registration is compulsory. And registration ends exactly a week from today. So I hope to see you. And before you stop or change the channel, don't forget to buy the book. The Couples Manual Book, Two Sides of the Story, is it? Bye.